Uh, okay, I will go start. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Yao Dong Tu, a uh, postdoc from MIT, working with Professor Gang Chen. Recently, we discovered the photomolecular effect. The visible light can uh, absorb it by the vapor liquid interface. Today, my presentation will talk about the experiment observation of photomolecular effect. You can find more details in our these two papers. We observe that visible light can uh, directly evaporate water at an incident angle, such as 30 degree, without any thermal precise. We use this glass container to hold the pure water and do the evaporating test on this setup. So this is the evaporating curve. So at the beginning, from A to B, the light is off. So it's natural evaporation. And at the point B, we turn on the light. And you can see the evaporation rate suddenly increase, but gradually decrease. And uh, from C to D, the evaporation and light is almost the same as the natural evaporation. And then we turn off the light at the point D. Amazingly, the, the weight recovered from D to E. And then it, uh, uh, it follows the natural evaporation. So this is a very exciting phenomenon. So, and this is one typical feature of the photomolecular effect. We also observe many other effects that point towards the photomolecular effect. First is the angle dependence. Here you can see the, the evaporation rate will peak around 30 to 40 degree. So this, we believe this suggests part of the electric field of the incident light should be perpendicularly to the water surface. In this case, the electric field can drive up the water from the surface. To further show the need for the perpendicular electric field, we measured the polarization dependence. Here, we use a linearly polarized laser. So the electric field only oscillates in the same plane. We found out only the transverse magnetic incident light can induce the photomolecular effect. So you can see here, it's the blue curve. So, <clears throat> and uh, we also find the wavelength dependence effect. So here you can see <clears throat> the evaporating rate will peak around the green light and the cutoff at the infrared light. So, <clears throat> and we also uh, find the temperature uh, effects. So you can see at a high temperature, the uh, evaporation rate is lower because uh, based on this, we believe there is some competence between the photos, uh, say, between the thermal evaporation and the photomolecular evaporation. Although this experiment looks the same, but there are a lot of details we should be careful. So next, I will talk more about the experiment details because we hope we can have other people to repeat our experiment and check these effects and have more people work on this. So the basic experiment is the light-induced water evaporation. The experiment setup looks like this. It includes the lead source, water container, a balance, and a stage. So here we know evaporation can be induced by light, but also can be by heat. So first, we must avoid the uh, how say we must minimize the thermal evaporation. So first. We, cut off, uh, we cover all the top surface of the balance. 
with a highly reflective film. And we also fabricated a glass uh, support structure to separate the web container from the balance. So, of course, the glass does absorb the visible light. So, and by the way, to uh, reduce the data fluctuation of the balance, here we put a transparent wind sheet around the wood sample. You can say the wood sheet is not totally closed. Its top is open. So, <clears throat> and uh, secondly, we need to cool the lens source because the lens, if we didn't cool the lens source, the hot lens source will uh, emit infrared light. They will heat up the water or the surrounding air. So here we use a 100 watt uh, LED chip as the lens source and uh, we use the water cooling. Water cooling has a large cooling capacity and more importantly, compared to air cooling, it almost doesn't disturb the airflow around the uh, water sample. By the way, be because the light beam of the LED is diverging. So here we use a custom made light tube to help concentrate it. It's made of 3M uh, ESR with a highly reflectance over 98%. So uh, again, I want to uh, emphasize that we to clearly say the light induced water evaporation, not thermal uh, driven uh, evaporation. We must uh, prevent the, uh, how say, prevent the thermal evaporation. So to check whether there is a thermal problem uh, on the setup, so there's a, a easy way. So for each measurement, we start from the nature evaporation. After the uh, water totally gets a thermal equilibrium with the uh, surrounding air, we turn on the light. And then you can see the, evapor uh, the evaporation suddenly increase. So the mass reduction curve so look like the green color one. Otherwise, if it looks, looks like the red, uh, red color one, a typical thermal evaporation evapor evapor curve, that means your, uh, the setup has thermal input. So we just need put the water sample far enough away from the lead source. So, and sometimes we also can put a glass sheet in front of the uh, lead tube to filter out all the infrared, uh, infrared light. We also uh, can find the uh, very important and interesting uh, features on the vapor side. However, directly use uh, some couple to measure the vapor temperature. Uh, have a lot of challenges. First, the subcouple has a much higher subconductivity than the air. If we, uh, and uh, uh, there are temperature gradients in the vapor side. So if we simply put the subcouple like this inside the air, actually it will do the tem temperature average in particular direction. And, and more, the subcouple will absorb the light and heat up itself. This will introduce a lot of uh, error. So here we propose a, a solution. We can use a U-shaped subcouple and uh, its horizontal leg is long enough. And uh, we also put a highly refractive film over the uh, subcouple to uh, block the direct light shining onto the subcouple. So based on the fine heat transfer analysis, we find out those stretches can uh, significantly reduce the measurement error. So here I want to say in our uh, experiments, the 
vapor, the evaporated ups with the vapor many move upwards inside the wind sheet. So that means the temp temperature variation in horizontal direction is very small. So here is the uh, vapor temperature distribution in vertical direction. So uh, this uh, is uh, this is uh, for the same sample, but heated by electric heater and light respectively. So for the uh, brown color one, it's uh, uh, heated by electric color, the electric heater. So the temperature drop continues from surface. But on the light, you can see there is a flat temperature zone. And, uh, uh, and additionally, the temperature drop near the surface and the light is much steeper. Actually, this is the, the second typical feature of the photomolecular effect. We also trying to map the vapor temperature using air camera. However, air camera can't directly measure the vapor temperature because the vapor has a very low emissivity. So here, we propose to use a thin glass slice as the vapor temperature indicator because glass slice has a very uh, small heat capacity. So that means it should have a fast response. It's more easy to get a thermal equilibrium with the vapor. And the second, glass has a, a low thermal conductivity. So that means if the glass size is thin enough, it can precisely reflect the vapor temperature in local. So after we get the uh, IR image, we do the uh, we select a zone just over the center of the uh, what surface with a uh, width about five millimeter and a height of five centimeter. And we do the temperature average at each height. And finally, we can get the uh, vapor temperature distribution in vertical direction. So thanks to its fast response. So here we can clearly see the temperature gradient change between and after let on. So here, <clears throat> before let uh, 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 when that on, you can see here, there's a, a flight temperature zone. This is consistent with our thermal couple measurement. But uh, after that off, the temperature grid quickly changed. It looks more like a linear decrease from top to height. We explain it like this. So after what cluster clicking out from the uh, surface, so at first it will dissociate and uh, absorb heat from the air. So it will cool the air. And that's why you can see there is a flat temperature zone. But after that with, with vapor moving up, upward, more dry air involved. So the moist air gets unsaturated and uh, the temperature drop again. And another interesting and important experiment is the fog experiment. Fog is made of small water droplets. Here, we use the ultrasonic to generate the fog with a diameter of about three micrometers. After the transparent box is fulfilled with fog, we turn on the light and we use an air camera to monitor the top surface temperature change. So here, you can see the temperature rising up is a uh, uh, random peaks around the green light. This is consistent with our photomolecular evaporation measurement, where the highest evaporate rate happens at green light. But here, the most important thing in the view of experiment is we must prevent the, uh, how to say, the fog generator from heating up. So here we use a high velocity flowing water to simultaneously supply water to the fog generator and also use this water cool the fog generator. Okay, so for short summary. So first to successfully 
uh, observe the light induce the uh, water evaporation. So we need uh, we must uh, minimize the thermal evaporation. Second, to map the vapor temperature profile, we can use a U-shaped thermocouple with a light blocker, or use an air camera with a thin glass slice as a vapor temperature indicator. To demonstrate, demonstrate, uh, to demonstrate the photomolecular effect on fog, we uh, should avoid the uh, fog generator uh, from heating up. So we can use a high velocity flame water to simultaneously supply water and cool the fog generator. Okay, that's all. Thanks for listening. And I also want to thank all my collaborators in this project. But particularly, I want to thank Professor Gui Hua Yu in UT Austin. In the beginning of this project, I learned a lot from Yu's group. Thanks. Okay, uh, thanks for your nice presentation. Um,